All right, district breakdown time. We are talking lower classifications. And as usual, we got my guy Matt Diggs with us. Talked about 4A. Let's talk 3A. And when you start talking about 3A, always talk about Brock. And, and that's in 3A Division One. So let's start with Brock and tell us how Division One is going to kind of shake down. Well, you know, Division One, it, it's going to be more of the same when we talk about uh, with Brock. And uh, Brock obviously has a lot of players coming back. But, you know, as it, it's also important for our private schools to know that at least as of now and things change, you know, Reed Watkins, the uh, uh, the stud defensive player and really a two-way player for Brock transferred to Fort Worth All Saints. So that's obviously going to be a, a big help for Fort Worth All Saints. Uh, but Brock still has a lot of players, a lot of All-State players coming back, and Camden Harris, Cooper Massey, Carson Fitty, uh, Kobe Dickens. I mean, these are players who are going to be big dogs. And, and in 4A division, in, 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 because the way, just like in 4A, the way things break out, they're in Region 1, so they're going to be mostly playing West Texas schools uh, out in uh, the playoffs. Uh, but I think the team to really watch out for, you know, last year was Whitesboro. And Whitesboro was that team uh, that really challenged Brock. And we had two just absolute fantastic uh, game of the year uh, contenders with that. Uh, but Whitesboro graduates a lot. Uh, you know, Mac Harper, can they get, you know, overcome that? Uh, Clay Hermes, uh, my guy, the, the, the greatest of all time when it comes to backup QBs. Uh, he's going to be stepping in that role. Uh, and I've been butchering his name on the District 4-3A report for about a year. And I finally heard somebody over the uh, loudspeaker one day. There's like Clay Hermes with the reception. And I'm like, I, I call him Clay Hermes, you know. And, like, and I asked him one day, I was like, you know, do I say your name wrong? And he was like, yeah, you do. But I'm not going to say anything about that. But this is a TV show-ish, you know. This is a uh, a social media supplement to a TV show. So we've got to get names right. That's what yeah, right. Get Absolutely. those names right, Diggs. Absolutely. And another name we're going to get right, Austin Iglesias uh, for uh, for Paradise. Uh, he was a fantastic player last year. Uh, he got hurt. Uh, so when the Paradise and Whitesboro played each other in the uh, in the regional uh, semifinals, we didn't get a chance to see him. Uh, but he should be back and healthy for next year. So for me, until you know, until I see a little bit, I'm actually going to put Paradise above Whitesboro uh, in District Four Three A. But I think all three of those teams uh, may end up being state ranked, and I think that we may see just like last year all of them playing in the, in the, in the regional semifinals and the regional finals. Uh, but again, you know, Rick Flair theory, Brock is the team. Now that they've had two heartbreaking uh, losses in the state finals, uh, I think that they're going, they're going to build upon that. And kind of like we see with Duncanville, Duncanville finally uh, got over that Galena Park hump. Uh, I think Brock, this could be a year that they finally get back over the hump as well. Uh, but, you know, going back into Region 2, it, there's a lot of good teams to talk about over there as well. Uh, Pottsboro and Winsboro, very good teams uh, to keep an eye on uh, over there. you got Major McBride, uh, the, the really good running back, coming back for Pottsboro. Uh, and Kyler Finney, the really good quarterback, is coming back for Winsboro. So I think at, at the top of that district, you know, it's, it's been Mount Vernon, been, you know, really the team that we kept an eye on there. Uh, but I think the DFW side with Pottsboro is going to uh, be – uh, probably the big dog in that, uh, you know, District 6-3A is an East Texas team, East Texas district. So we're not going to talk about that. I know your your heart rate just lowered. Like, ooh, yeah. we're not going to talk about Atlanta and Jefferson. Yeah. And try to have to sell these things. But they got swept out of the playoffs last year by uh, District 5-3A. So, you know, we, we can kind of uh, put them to the side. But District 7-3A, you got West and Grandview. And I know you love your Zebras uh, in, yeah. in Grandview. But I think West is really the team to beat again in District 7-3A. West, comma, Texas, not West, Texas, like we talked about in Region 1 with, uh, with uh, 3A. Uh, so kind of keep an eye on them. And then District 8 3A, obviously, it's going to be the Malakoff show again. Uh, you know, I think uh, really the, the more fun of that, and, that, and we'll talk more about this when we get into the dump in August, uh, I think you're going to have a lot of competition for second place because Grosbeck, Teague, uh, Mejia, Fairfield, these are all teams that are right on the fringe of DFW, and, and they're all kind of the, the same beast, and I think they're all going to be better uh, this year. But Malakoff is obviously the big dog, so – Who's going to come out of that and challenge Brock in the state semifinals? Might we get a Brock Pottsboro? I think it was 2019 we had Brock Pottsboro at the star for the right yeah. to uh, play at AT&T. So you might see something like that again, or maybe West versus Brock, uh, if Brock can get past Bushland, because Bushland is going to be a team that is also out in West Texas, a team to keep an eye on as well in Region 1. Absolutely. And then and moving to Division 2, and – we're doing this in April, which is early, but it's not early for teams like Brock and Gunter because 
as most teams are like, man, I got to keep these guys trained in, in physical shape to get through a 10 game season. These two teams are going to go into their April knowing they're going to play 15, 16 games. So it's, they getting themselves into even top, even more top notch condition. Talk a little bit about Guntu who's found themselves at six out of the last seven state title games. Uh, obviously a dynasty going on there in Tiger Lane. It is. And when you look at region two where uh, Gunter plays, there is just nobody within four touchdowns of this team. So, I mean, it would take a complete epic meltdown. Uh, and, and really the team that's been kind of right on their heels in their region is in their district with Bells. Uh, Bells has been a team that's been right, you know, playing them more competitively every year. So if Bells can continue to get better, it's really the only competition that you're going to see Gunter have. Uh, Holiday has pushed them a little bit out, uh, out in the Wichita Falls area. And I think Holiday is going to be a good team again. Uh, but again, when I just look at these teams, it, it, it's the Gunter show. And you got Colin Peacock coming back. You got Walker Overman coming back. Uh, Cole Harpole coming back. Uh, I'm more excited about that week four matchup in Gunner and Brock play, uh, just like they played last year, uh, almost than any, uh, anything else in the regular season. Same with Brock. Uh, Brock and Whitesboro might be a fun game. Brock and Paradise. Because both of those games were absolute bangers last year. Uh, Brock had to win on a just an incredible late uh, second, a last second field goal uh, against Paradise that uh, you know should you know a lot of questions about whether that should be counted or not uh, because of of a uh, false start uh, in, in the first attempt where the kick was missed, and then Whitesboro and Brock obviously speak for itself. Uh, in District 7 3A, Palmer is a team that's getting a lot better. So that's kind of a good time to keep an eye on. Uh, and, and kind of, you know, a little snarky commentary here. Uh, but, you know, you probably remember what happened last year with Gunter in the first round against uh, Cedar Hill Trinity leadership, uh, where they just kind of forfeited that game. They're like, ah, oh, we're not going to play Gunter in the first round. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if they continue. Uh, because they played pretty well at times. Uh, they even beat Gainesville last year in a game that absolutely shocked me. Uh, so is, is that a team to kind of keep an eye on in District 7-3A? Obviously, in District 6-3A, Holiday, uh, they got Parker Jones and Tyrese Polite coming back. Uh, so that's a, a team to keep an eye on. Our guy, Rocky Smart, who was over at Sanger, is now over at Valley View. So you might see uh, Valley View be a team to keep an eye on in District 6-3A. And really, in District 5-3A, I like Jacksboro. I think Jacksboro is going to be a fun team to keep an eye on. Uh, Jacksboro, Comanche, Millsap, they kind of – uh, go back and forth. Uh, Millsap is a fun team to watch. I think they're a team on the rise. Uh, Parker County team, shout out to our guy Nolan Ruth, who uh, keeps Millsap on his uh, front burner uh, and keeps me updated with all their comings and goings. Uh, but still, I think Jacksboro and Comanche are going to be competing for that. But again, when you look at this, these DFW teams, none of them, again, are three, four touchdowns uh, close to Gunter. So Gunter is going to have to have some sort of epic collapse to not be playing in the regional semi finals again but you know when they play Canadian or a team out there in West Texas that's when it gets real for them and their coach you know and, and, and he may talk about this uh, in, in interviews really like you talked about it they have to keep that focus uh, you know and how to get through the slog of some of these uh, teams that are not as good as as they are to get to stay at a high level when they start to play a team that will hit them in the mouth like they will in week 15 week 16 uh, in the in the regional finals uh, regional finals and the state semifinals. Yeah, yeah. Jake Frizzell is going to have to, like you said, get them on, get them sharp, which is why they try to play as much as they can in the non-district. And I believe you may be showing up at that Brock game. Am I correct? I will be there. Well, then you can go with Neil Beasley, man. I'm sending both of y'all on the country roads. That's how we're doing it this year. Tag team in the country roads. That way one guy can switch out driving if somebody gets tired. Tag team. It's Preston Road, Ward. It's Preston Road. Gunder is Some literally people get Preston tired Road. on Preston Road. Some people get to, You don't know what Beasley has a long day at work. He may get tired driving out there. He goes right from Highland Park on Preston Road straight up to Gunner. He gets tired. I'm telling you, all going to switch off at a QT. That's, the, <laughs> that's 3A for you. I appreciate you, Diggs. And, I'm, and we're going to talk some more 2A in a little bit. I'm excited about some small school Diggsy.